What's up guys, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, today I'm gonna be installing the Juro Disc two-piece rotors, and this one I'll do later, but also have their magic pads. So um, because my rotor is pretty much has a huge lip here, here, and the grooves are pretty bad, the brakes squeal like hell, um, I did upgrade to the EBC yellow stuff, but you know, the rear where I'm back order and this one doesn't work as well because of this rotor but yeah I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna tackle this but first off we need to take the spacer off and then we can remove the pads take off the caliper take off the OE rotor and pretty much put everything back together and then I'll just do the brake lines well, I already did the brake lines in a few days ago which was pretty much a nightmare of bleeding it but I'll bleed it with multiple RBF 600 and after that I'm gonna bed in the brakes for about I don't know 100 miles softly because these aren't track pads these are just like this pretty basic street pads because everything is in back order so let me get this wheel spacer off and we can get started so if you installed brick uh, wheel spacers before you know how hard it is to get this on without an extra person holding the brakes so what I did when I did the wheel spacers was Took some of these right here. These tiles to protect the caliper. Well, mostly like like this. And then I would hold up. <laughs> if I break the bolt this way, the caliper go this way. So just gotta make sure. But yeah, put it like this. And then if that works. You can break the caliper like this. You can break it loose just like that. And then pretty much do that for all of them. And what's nice about the wheel spacer is that everyone knows that the OEM studs are known to kind of strip off and break easily you open if you kind of take your wheel off all the time so this will help once I got that off hopefully these come off I did have some um, thread lock around this, so let me knock these out and then I'll show you guys what's next. So finally got the wheel spacer off. You can see that the OEM studs are kind of getting bad, but it's okay. But I was kind of a bitch because I had some thread lock in there, which is for safety. But yeah, good thing I put some anesthes on the back so it doesn't stick to the rotor here, which I want to do with the Jura disc as well. So next, it's time to take this rear, uh, these pads off. Pretty simple, just, I believe it's a 10, 11, or 12 millimeter bolt right here. Take out these pins and just a uh, clipper here, and then you can just pull out the pads. Once that's done, we can go taking off the caliper. Okay, so it's actually 13 millimeter, not 11, 10, or 12. What the? I'm gonna get this right here. Break it loose. just a small little bolt right here and then it pretty much pulls this out right here which we can punch later all right 
totally forgot how I did this, but once you get the the like one of them, then the other one should be easy because the retaining clip isn't holding any you know force against it. So. push on this and see if I can pull it out. Yeah. Push on this clip right here, and then this should come off. Definitely gonna be cleaning this so I can go a bit smoother. Yeah, this one should come off pretty easily now. Um, let me just hit it a little bit so it can get it started. All right, finally got it out. Now we can slide the pads out if they want to come out. Let's see. God damn! If one of them doesn't work, something else will not want to come out. Wow. Man, things never go as smooth as you want it to be. I don't know if it's like because of the lip of the rotor. So I could pull this out right here. There you go. Um, for those of you that's cringing right here, I'll put a towel right here so it doesn't damage the paint. God damn, this thing is tight. So not bad. I thought there would be more grooving, but it's not bad, but yeah. See that it's a bit curved right here, which is not ideal, but hopefully this one is easier to get out. Yeah, there you go. See, finally. These pads have a lot of life left, so if the front ones go out, I'm gonna be replacing with these. Yeah, they have a lot of life left. And the rears have a lot of life left too. It's just the rotor that's really bad. All right, so next I'm gonna take this 12 millimeter and break this bolt loose. It's the one that's the brake line connected to the strut dial. Break that one loose. So then once we break the bolts for the caliper, um, there won't be anything that's holding it. And we could dangle it onto my little makeshift box right here. Um, make sure it's elevated enough so that Caliper isn't dangling on the brake lines. It's off right here. It's just this right here. There. And then the caliper is way in the back. It's a 19 millimeter. Just break those two and then start breaking them off. And then we can slowly take the caliper off. Okay, so I finally broke the bolts loose. Um, so good thing mine did not strip yet because um, it's aluminum caliper to a steel wheel hub, so. Just be careful when you take it out. Now I'm gonna put oh, it's gonna be hard. 
do. Okay, put my hand on the caliper. This should be able to dangle down. If I bring the box closer to me. Hopefully it's raised enough so there's not that much slack in the line. Um, I think you can do it where you just put it on there, but now I'm gonna leave it like this. It should be good enough. All right, just to know, I put the caliper over there on the control arm. It's pretty much everyone does because uh, this is a bit too much slack for it, but yeah. Let me take this rotor off. It should come off pretty easily. Yep. If it you're if there's like it's pretty much stuck, you could put an eight millimeter bolt here and here and crank both of them kind of simultaneously so you can slowly pull it out. But my rotor is pretty new, so yeah. Quite heavy <laughs> compared to the Giro disc. But pretty sick. So the hub on mine is fairly clean because it's Pretty much a brand new car, only like 17,000 miles. But I'm gonna clean it off just a bit, see if it does any difference. But just make it a bit cleaner, and then I will apply anti ACs here as well. And also, I'm gonna clean these wheel studs because I'm gonna have to torque these and put some thread locker again because I have the wheel spacers. pieces just came off So got all cleaned off now. Now I'm just gonna spray some brake cleaner just to clean this, um, the brake shield and clean this off a little bit. Since you're right there, you might as well clean the caliper as well. Just to make it look a bit nicer and, you know, clean up a little bit.
especially when I clean the area where the pad slides on. So it makes a much smoother engagement. Should be good enough. Put it back in its position. Now I'm gonna do a weight comparison. So here's the front. Hopefully it registers. Two, three. It's twenty-four point five pounds for the front. Over 40 kilos, I believe. So I'll put the kilos, I guess. And the zero of this, the front ones, are that's right here. One, two, three. These are 20 pounds, so you lose four and a half pounds, which rotational mass is a lot. But again, when you drive it, you probably won't feel it, but you'll feel the cooling effects. And when you go on track and lighter wheels, everything. It will be much better with the less unsprung mass. So, yeah, pretty substantial, four and a half pounds. A lot has to do with the two-piece rotor, the aluminum 6061 hat right here, compared to this one piece right here. And this does feel heavier. Both of them are heavy. Brake discs are generally heavy unless you have carbon ceramics. But I'm pretty weak, so disregard that. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the weight. But yeah, first I'll put some anti-seize. Um, I just have this one right here. So I'm gonna put that, put it all over the baiting surface, get a little bit, put it on each side first, and then I can spread it out. I'm also gonna put some on this hub ring because um, that's where it's gonna meet to the rotor and then also the wheel and the wheel spacer. So let me just spread this out evenly. At least this is going pretty easily compared to the other stuff, but that's how it is. Then put some on the hub ring. This. Want to use just enough, not too much, or else it attracts dirt. Get it off the studs. All right, that should be good. Now let's get on to the rotors. All right, so here's the rotors. Um, it comes with this right here. It says the right, obviously. Make sure that the slots are this way and the curves are like this way. And then it says it was inspected on July 13, 2022. There's all this information that you should read. But now I'm gonna clean it. I'm not sure if they put any film or not, but I'm just gonna do it just in case. So get some brake cleaner. Just to make sure that this thing is no nothing on the rotor. Do it one more time. Some stuff there. Yeah, I'm gonna do it for the other side and then we can put it on the hub. All right, so I got everything set up. Now I'm gonna put the rotor on. Beautiful. And I'm gonna put some of the lug nuts on just so that it can stay stable once I put the caliper on. Nice. 
clean the surface one more time. now so now we can put the caliper on but first I need to get my anti-seize for this right here now this is the anti-seize I'll be using um, I wanted to get the copper one but no one really has that in stock I guess so I'm just gonna be using this um, it says it's around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit so that should be enough and to do this um, a lot of people have this debate where they should do a reduction when they put NICs, but you're barely stretching the bolt about 25%. So you're not gonna go past the yield of this bolt right here. So you're not gonna stretch it. So I'm just gonna put it to torque uh, to the factory one. It's 88.5 foot pounds for the front. And I think it's the same for the rear as well. I'm gonna double check, put some NICs on and then torque these all down. And then we could go to the pads. So I'm gonna to try to align this caliper first here. Hopefully it doesn't nick anything. Bring it over to the new. This is so weird. Okay, finally got the, the bolt started. Um, it should go fairly easy tight hand. If it's not, then you probably cross threaded it. So make sure it goes quite easily in. So now I'm gonna to torque the bolts that mount to the caliper to the wheel hub to 88.5 foot-pounds or 120 newton meters. And this is with the anti-seize. So. Okay, caliper is finally bolted in all the way. Um, and I could put this brake close bracket right here. Again, 12 millimeter, don't have to tighten it. Uh, the manual says like, what, 24 foot pounds, but it really doesn't matter. Just make it tight. <laughs> That and make sure the lines aren't pinched or anything, and we should be good. All right, break that time. So, um, with the fixed copper, I think it's pretty easy to push the pistons back in. With a um, what's it called, a floating caliper, I think you have to use a tool, but this one you can easily do it by hand. Um, they do have tools where you can separate it, but I don't know. Doing this could be easier. Um, <laughs> I think it would have been easier if you did it off the hub, but just push it by hand. It's not that bad. Well, this one's a bit tough, but. And we do this so that we can clear the new pads because new pads have a lot of material compared to when it was worn down. So the pistons are kind of pushed out, which we want to push it back in. And if it doesn't fit, we could just push it back even more. But yeah, the side is a bit tricky. This one, this one coming in. All right, so now that the pads are somewhat pushed in, I'm gonna be using this as a brake part lubricant. I'm just gonna put it in the back of the pad. It's rated to about 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's a lot. And for the pads specifically, this is what they want. 
with the wear indicator to be on the inside and then the outside doesn't have wear indicator so make sure you do that if you don't do that um the wear indicator might hit the hat of the floating caliper so or the rotor so don't do that i should put just a little bit of this here not too much because i don't want any to pick up a lot of dirt just enough so that it doesn't get stuck to the pistons. Okay, this one should be the outside. So we're just gonna slide it in. If it doesn't wanna go in all the way, we can press the pistons back more, which I think we need to again. So go back, push in the pistons more. I think it's because of this one. Should work, now, I guess. God damn! Come on, this doesn't want to work. Okay, both pads are in. A little bit tricky, but got the job done. It's fairly simple. Just gotta step in there. Now I'm gonna take hardware, which if I can find the other piece, so here it is, there's the hardware, um, I think I'm going to spray it down a little bit, just clean it off, okay, we can finally put this on, so it goes like this way, with the clips like that, I'm going to put one of them in, I already cleaned it already, so should be, should go pretty easy in there, like that, second one it's a bit hard Pushing until you get to this right here, which can be difficult. I think I got it in. All right, I got it in. I can hit it in with hammer. It pins in.
Should be good. And I'm gonna take this right here. This one, you want it to be here where the flat sides are. This, make sure it goes through that. I mean, you could have done this before, but it's okay. It's okay, Jason. Yep, should have done this before, damn it. It's okay. I'll make it work. All right, with a little work, got it in. And you wanna tighten this. You gotta make sure that the flat sides are here or else it won't go seat all the way. Once I got in there, get my torque wrench, 21.22.1 foot pounds. I think it's about 73 newton meters. No, it's not 73, but. It's not 73 newton meters, sorry. Just don't get like that. Turn this and everything should be good. Let me put the car in neutral and then we'll see if it can spin or not. Car's in neutral. Everything's good so far. Everything spins. Clearance is pretty good. Now I'll take these off right here. So now since the front is done, let me show you guys the rear and then I'll do the other rest and this should be pretty much done. And then for me, I have to bleed the brakes to put in the multiple, um, the RBF 600 and then I can break in the pads. So just like the front for the rears, I'm going to take out the wheel spacer for me. If you don't skip this part, the best part is that this does have a parking brake, so I don't need to put like anything to hold it. I can just turn it and no brake loose. These are coming out better than the fronts, but I know that once I save that, it's gonna give me a pain later. Nope, these are much easier. Now we can take the pad out. Um, it has the same pins as the front, but without this caliper board right here. So it should be much easier, but we'll see. to go my way. Come on, baby. Fuck. I'm fucking up in paint already.
close. This one works. God damn it. This one, it's a bit smaller. Oh yeah, it's much better. Finally, let's get these little smaller ones here. Pop this bitch out. Fuck. 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 Come on, bro, get out. Brother here, fuck his ass up. Fucking bitch. Some of these little smaller pliers, see if you can get it out. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Was about goddamn time. Mm. Damn it. Mm, so this clip right here is holding it. Come on, bitch, I got you. Get your ass out of there. Oh, no more sleep party. Come on, baby, we're almost there. <laughs> There's some of you probably watching like, this fucking idiot. It's the wrong way to do it. Don't give a fuck, man. I got it. Cut it out. So make sure you memorize this orientation like this. This side. Should be able to take out the rear pads. 
fairly easy. Let's look at this. Stock pads, a little bit dirty here. But yeah, has a lot of material left, which is good. But the rotor does have a small little lip here in the inside. Still grooved, but a little less than the fronts. So, fuck. Tell me this guy is gonna be an issue. Chunky boys. So before I finish, um, I'm gonna release the parking drum brake just in case. And then I can take off the caliper and start taking off this rear rotor. So just like in the front, there is a 12 millimeter right there, right here that we gotta take off to remove the hose brake line. And then we can start removing this, uh, the caliper bolt is a 17 millimeter and I just bought this because I did not have a 17 millimeter only had some uh, Imperial stuff so good thing I bought that a few days ago the hose bracket is just a what over there no nut get this loose then we can take 17 millimeter and break the back bolts off. I just gotta find a place to put this. Um, I think right here is okay. Um, I put it on the lower control arm. Hopefully it doesn't fall, but it's a pretty good spot. Now, take off the motherfucking rotor. Hopefully this comes off. Oof. Don't you love brand new cars? This comes off very easily. Voila. This is heavy too, bro. But yep, this is the parking brake. The parking shoe looks pretty good. I haven't really used it except for parking, but... Yep, you can see the inside of it. Now let's weigh this in the Jura disc. All right. Let's weigh these bad boys. The rear one. One, two, three. Rear one weighs 18 pounds for stock. And let's see the drill disc one. Drill disc weighs in at one, two, three. Wow, 12.5 pounds. So what, that's five and a half pound savings. A lot more savings than the front, which should help a lot because of this two piece rotor right here. It's an aluminum hat, this is a one piece. And let's get part of this one. 
Um, make sure you take this out right here. This is so you can service. Oh, actually, this one doesn't have it, so I don't think you really need it. So we'll forget that. So let's get on to the rear rotors. Just like the front, we're gonna clean this surface here. Um, it's fairly clean, but just gonna do it just in case. And then we're gonna put some brake cleaner and clean the the brake shield. I think this one's better. Yeah. I just want to make sure that the threads are good, so when I put the wheel spacer back on, um, there's no binding or anything, and it will won't come off because that's the worst thing you want to do. Make sure when you put the wheel spacers back, if you have any, put some thread locker on because if that shit comes off, <laughs> you're done. Your wheel space and your wheel will be flying off of your fucking hub and that's um, scary and pretty dumb of you to do so make sure you do that yeah mine's fairly clean so it's not really much to do we just gotta clean the threads off because everyone knows stock threads are garbage you can get extended ones from arp i think and yeah get those if you want to they have this right here. Put the penis in the hole. Uh, I like choosing this right here. Should be good. Towel, brake cleaner. I don't think you should get any in here, so watch out. this clean the surface off before I put some anti-seize Should be good enough. Now we can put on the Jordis rotor. And before you put the Jordis rotor on, make sure you clean the surface of it. All right, time to fit the Jordis rotors. Perfect. Lines up with the rear. Should be able to spin perfectly in. Alright, now I'm going to take some lug nuts and just place them on there so that the rotor can stay still while I put in the caliper back in. So far installs has been going pretty smoothly, which I'm a fan of. Um, better than the brake, in, brake line install. 
which is not any of the manufacturer's fault, it's just user error. Plus my first time doing it, so I'm bound to be learning something. Perfect. Now I'm gonna clean the caliper a little bit and then we can start mounting it on the wheel hub. Okay, so got the anises on the bolt. Now I can slowly put the rear caliper on. Not to damage new rotors. Don't damage Judas rotor. Damaging it, Jason, you're damaging it. thread on fairly easy if it's not then again cross thread it the rear one's a bit hard to line up but it's okay should be fairly easy to um, hand tight okay now the torque is 53.8 or 73 newton meters I might round to 54 just to make it a bit easier yeah this bitch down. It's a 17 millimeter again. I'm slowly gonna do both of them. Not do them all at once. But you know. Um, I'm probably gonna get my smaller torque wrench because the space is very limited. Okay. Got my smaller torque wrench. All right, so now I'm gonna push in the pistons to clear some space for the new ones. Not sure why this is tighter. Again, I should have done this piston while I was out of the car. God damn it, Jason, you're so dumb. And before we do the rear pads, I just want to show you a comparison between the stock one and the Jiro Desk one. The Jiro Desk are here. You can see that the material is a bit more on the stock one compared to the Jiro Desk. See right there. If you line up the holes, there's just a bit more meat on the stock ones, but that has to do to clear with the, to clear the two piece rotor here, which is fine, but you lose a little bit of pad material. All right, put some brake lubricant on the back. And now we can slide this, hopefully inside, easily, nope. Oh now, try this in there, there you go. Now do the rear.
Boom, there you go. Mucho bueno. Now I'm gonna take the clips and this, clean this off first, then we can put it back in there. Just like before. Put this in. Hopefully it goes in smoothly. Gotta make sure it goes through that, this clip right here. Go through both pads. Okay. Now we can hammer it in a little bit. Double check is going through. Yep, it is. the bottom one oh she so got double check so this did not go through make sure that it goes through the holes of the pads if it doesn't very unsafe and wrong so let me do that again. Put it in. Make sure it goes through the pad as well. Then we can try to slide it in through the clip, got it in. Now try to make it go through this other pad here. Double check. Through both pads. Nice. Now we just hit it in a little bit. Good. Now same for the other side. In. Gotta push the clip down a little bit, just like the front. This one's a bit difficult to get in. Now I'm just gonna hammer it in until I just start seeing the tips of these pins. Alright, so those are having difficulties trying to get this rear pin out because you can't really get a hammer in it. Um, I use this oil filter removal tool, put it in the back, put a towel right here, right here so you don't scratch the paint, and then just pinch away and then it finally kind of closes this area here. So. Uh, this should be good enough i'll try it again but look this one will go here but once i punch it in it'll come out this way so that's an easy way to do it and that's pretty much it i'm going to try the other side finish it all up and test out these brakes all right guys so i just finally finished bleeding the brakes and did the rotors and pads on this side on the left driver side so overall this install is pretty it's pretty straightforward um it's much easier on a fixed caliper than a floating caliper but to each their own but yeah, gonna test this out, kind of bed in the pads a little bit and see if I hear any noises or if the brakes are a bit squishy or not, but we'll see. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you're driving your dream car.